With the end of the year coming and Global and JP posting at the same time, the black screen almost signalizing they're basically sinking. Um, I thought it would be cool to look over all of the banners that have ever come on the game. And of course, next week we're going to probably see uh, the last festival of the year, which may or may not be Emiliotis that was leaked. So... Um, just want to look at it and see, you know, talk about how it, how it was when it came out, how the game felt back then. I know a lot of people are going to have some some nostalgia looking at some of the old banners as well. I actually did not come up with this idea. Um, I did actually steal this from uh, my T channel. Um, uh, but listen, his video is Japanese, so you wouldn't watch this video, but you would watch mine because it's in English. So it's... <laughs> <laughs> I am appropriating his video. It's I'm like I'm assuming it's the same video um, because he does look over all the banners, but I don't know what he says because I don't understand. So I don't know, but I'm, uh, that's what I'm doing. I want to look at every banner, and here is the Korean forum. The Korean forum has every single banner ever that ever came out listed um, in order. I actually wanted to make this video for global. I actually want to look at every global banner ever released, but uh, the global forum doesn't have that, unfortunately. The, the JP for not JP, Korea. JP actually has, starting from Zeldris, for whatever reason, I don't know why. Well, they didn't list it before them, but um, it like they have like this section, like New Hero. And every single time a new character came out, they posted the one page for the character here. Uh, if you go, like, you know, the regular one, there's so many posts, right? You can't really just, you know, do so easily. Like, so look how many posts just for King, you know? Um, unfortunately, there's none for Global. I actually wanted to do for Global, but it's okay. It's okay. Um, so, Korea... <laughs> uh, the first few banners is gonna be a tough one for me, because I only started playing the game uh, when Askenor came out, but I was actively... Um, in the circle of people who were playing the game, because I've been friends with Mystic, Kabuki, that were playing the game back then. Um, when JP first came out, I just wasn't. I don't know why, honestly. I wasn't. I was still playing Blazing. <laughs> I'm just, I'm stupid. Uh, but Liz, this, this is such a funny banner to me, because this is the one banner that Grand Cross hit number one top grossing in Japan. A green Liz with red SR Liz. And red SR Liz, when she came out, she was, like, broken, right? Green Liz hit top grossing. Number one. This was the peak of Grand Cross monetarily was when Liz, green Liz, came out. That's crazy to me. But, yeah, uh, green Liz and SR Liz came out at the same time, uh, which, honestly... Man, I'm so sad that they don't make releases like this anymore. It would be so nice if they, you know, every time a new, not maybe, maybe not every time, but like a lot of times when a new character comes out, they release an SR form of that character. Let's say the new Festival King just came out, right? Release an SR form of that very same King for people that don't pull the new King. And like, it, 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 it could be just good. Like this green, this green list was good. But the Red Aster Liz was also really good, so if you didn't pull Green Liz on the banner, you still wouldn't feel bad because you most likely would have pulled the Red Liz because the rates were so high for her. So, this is one of the things that, like, man, Grand Cross had such good ideas back then, and then they stopped doing them. Maybe because it wouldn't make them any money. Second ever released banner was Red Merlin with... Uh, with Helbrim. So funny also that they put like a red Helbrim like 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 he's an SR because these characters are SRs, right? This is again SRs releasing in banners, man. <laughs> Why did they stop that? Uh, and like red Helbrim is here like he's one of the SRs. Like, <laughs> uh, But yeah, Merlin and Helbrim. This was, you know, back then uh, green... Sorry, not green. Uh, uh, blue Skinny King was already in the game. Right, he was... He was uh, uh, story, reward, so when Red Halbrum came out was when Kingbrum became a thing, so that was uh, fun times in the game, uh, I'm, I'm very certain. Uh, nice image, great image, but this is Blue Alley Hawk. 
but damage is just not loading. This is Blue Alley Hawk. Blue Alley Hawk, I remember, also, uh, people were, were uh, pretty excited for it because, you know, Green Liz is like top girl, so people were like, oh, another Elizabeth, it's probably gonna be like huge. Um, but I recall after her release, like, uh, the videos I saw in my timeline were not very exciting about, like, excited about her, so it was an interesting release as well. But not to the extent of, like, Hellbrim and uh, Green Liz was. Uh, oh, right, bro, so early and freaking uh, the Slime collab came out. The Slime collab was the fourth banner ever released in the game. That's insane. Like, it was so early. It was like, I remember it was like one month after the game came out, right? This was um, 24th of July. It was like one month after the game came out. And then they released Lilia, original character, right off the bat. Boom. And then, of course, the slime collab. Yeah, that was so soon. That was so early in the lifespan. It was crazy. And, of course, so they they made a, a Link ultimate. I forgot. The, the, a combo ultimate from Rimuru and Meliodas. But they don't make those anymore. Why do they stop making those ultimates? They, they, if you have a specific character and you link them, they have, like, a better ultimate. It's so dumb to me that they stop doing that. Like... It can't be because they're lazy, because the animations in the game, I think, have gotten better, right? Overall, the animations in the game have gotten better over time, so it can't be because they're lazy. I think that they kind of just forgot about it. I don't know, but that... Insane. Like, this is actually when I made my Grand Cross account. Um, I made my Grand Cross account, I remember I did one multi, and I pulled Blue Rimuru. Like, my JP has Blue Rimuru, even though I... I only started playing when the Green Asker, I only like really started playing when Green Asker came out. My GP account has Blue Rimuru and SR Rimuru because of them. Hopefully one day they'll come back. It's been leaked like 500 things that haven't come back, haven't come yet. Like the Festival of Estorosa, the, the comeback of Slime. I'm just waiting for that, okay? The, maybe one day. Uh, next up, I believe this is... Uh, oh, this is just saying about uh, the the... The, uh, the guarantees of Sartic and stuff like that. Uh, because I remember, yeah, it was like multiple banners. It wasn't like one, like on global, you guys had it way better. On global, it was like, you know, all four characters in one banner. Um, but <laughs> on JP, <laughs> it was like, it was different banners. It was like multiple different banners. So um, you got kind of cucked if you only summon for like, because I think I only summoned for Rimuru. I think the banner that I summoned was, like, only Rimuru in it. I actually don't remember, but I think it was just only Rimuru in it. And then Green Elaine was the next release after that. Which I think, at the time, she was she came out for um, the King Final Boss. So she was uh, designed with the King Final Boss in mind. Uh, I do remember a lot of people are like, oh, this unit's kind of trash, but you need her for the final boss. Because back in the day, you know, you talk about final boss Askeler, final boss king, back in the day, was on another level. Right? It was on another level. Um, so, yeah, that, <laughs> that, was, uh, that was the reason why that came out. New heroes announced. It was a Galland and Red Arthur. Again, and... Blue SR Arthur, another SR character of an SSR character that came out. Why did they stop doing this? It, oh, it's, oh, it's so dumb. Uh, <laughs> Blue Gallon and Red Arthur. I mean, they comboed together, right? Because you'd have the, the Blue Arthur um, amplify for Gallon, right? I, it is like, character-wise, it's a bit of a random release, right? Gallon and Arthur together, but the units themselves did combo well because of the uh, the Amplify, so I guess it makes sense. Uh, Gallant was meta when he came out as well. Red Arthur, not so much. Red Arthur was a big deal on Global at launch, but not so much in JP, mostly because people on JP didn't realize how good he was uh, until Red Askener came out. And then when Global came out, it was after Red Askener had already come out in JP, and the Global player was like, this guy on JP, people didn't use him because they were stupid. Like, look, he, he he's obviously good. And then, obviously, the goal of meta was like Red Arthur right in the beginning. And the. Uh, and the. Uh, it lasted for a long time as well. 
Oh, oh, okay. After th this is a uh, blue Liz, and I remember this is like at the time I was like this is when I I, I actually uh, was thinking of starting playing the game, but I didn't actually pull the trigger until uh, we asked her. Blue Liz, what an interesting release because um, I think this is like the one character that I remember a lot of JP players really regret <laughs> that they instantly leveled up as soon as they pulled her. But I know a lot of people also skipped this banner uh, because it wasn't. Obvious. Oh no, 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 no! This is wasn't this a skip on global? I miss her. Like I wasn't playing the game, so I'm, I'm I might be like confusing this for room when this came out on global. This was the 100 day step up. Um, so people might, might have been actually really excited for it. I'm I again I wasn't playing the game. I'm just uh, talking as an outside outside perspective. When when green green Asker comes out, right? Here on, the, on our list, that's when I I can give a, a more valid opinion on the banner's release, but they put all lists on the banner as featured. This is also back when, you know, every SSR was in every banner, except of course the uh, the collabs, but... Um, and then freaking uh, <laughs> the SSR tickets had every SSR as well, so... Ba back, in, back in that day, back in my day, alright? Oh, this is it. This is where I started playing the game. Green Askenor and Green DN. If you go on my channel right now and you go sort by oldest, my first video summoning for Green Askenor two years ago. 600 gems? I must have been balling. Damn. Yeah, summoning for Green Askenor. And of course, the end. Which back in the day, the end was unironically better than Askenor, but because it was the end, you know, no one really gave her credit for. Um, but she was broken. Like Green, the end was actually broken because back in the day, the mechanic for taunt was stupidly OP. Because um, if someone was taunting, right, you couldn't target anyone else. So for now, if someone's taunting, you can target someone else, right? So that if you incapacitate their taunt or take off their taunt, the next target will go to the other person that you targeted. But that back then you couldn't, you couldn't target someone else. So let's say you're using King Brum, which was what everyone was using. If someone used a DM taunt, your Petrify would go to the end and all your other single targets would also go to the end because you could not target someone else. At the same time, Petrify was broken because if your character was petrified, cleansing the petrify would do absolutely nothing because you couldn't use the card afterwards. A lot of good changes have come to this game, man. A lot of good changes that we take for granted. A lot of good changes. This that was like a unnecessary change, I feel like. It was a big nerf, of course, for Tauntians, but I think necessary change. And the green Askenor was like, again, this was the reason why I picked up the game. This guy. This guy, I used him. My mileage on Green Askenor is insane. <laughs> All right, and this was like a huge shaft as well. I remember. Um, I think I went. So I did like 600 plus, and I think I didn't pull him because back in the day, no guarantees, right? Um, and I think, man, I, I don't even know how many gems okay. I had. I had to go for to pull him. Like I went pretty deep on Askenor. Like for I recall. For back then standards, especially, right? Because back then I, I, I wasn't whaling. And again, another SR character release. <laughs> Not the best SR, but they should st they should go back to making SRs, man. I, I uh, They should go back to making SRs. This, oh, this is the one I just clicked. Next one. Who, who was a green after Green Escador? Oh, it was Halloween! Oh, such a terrible, <laughs> such a terrible banner. I remember back in the day, uh, even then, like, people were like, man, this character is trash. Because everyone, like, looked at his passive, right? That every turn he increases his crit chance. And I was like, man, this, this could be good. But then it's like, it takes 10 turns. There was no use for him in the game. It was so bad. He was bad from day one, Sag. And Elaine was not great either. There wasn't much use for her back in the day. Nowadays, she's kind of good because she's a booster. But back in the day, there wasn't much use for her either. Um, but yeah, that's that's funny. Back then, like Red Demon, you you you'd use like a 
like a blue king to petrify and stuff like that. Oh, raids were were a different a different struggle back then. Blue Lilia right after. Oh, Blue Lilia! I remember um, it was my first step up with the um, the uh, reduction. This is where you know Global was very different because was it Valencia came out before Blue Lilia on Global, right? Or Valencia came out before Blue Lilia Melios? I remember that. Blue Lilia came out and like. No one was really, like, understanding her purpose, right? Because she came out and was like, oh, she boosts our allies' peers, which is okay, I guess. But then, one week later, big man, Blue Demon Meliodas, he was insane. This man was insane back then. Like, he is still good. Kinda, to this day, this man's still kinda good. Not really, but kinda. Like, the, Blue Demon Mali was a game-changing unit. He was, like, legitimately overpowered. It was impossible to play PvP and not face Blue Demon Mali. Like, you guys think the meta is bad now? When Blue Demon Mali, this is, again, let me talk, like, when Blue Demon Mali came out on JP, there was no Valencia. If you only played Global, you don't know. Because when Global had Blue Demon Mali, you already had Valencia. So it wasn't as bad. It was still bad. Don't get me wrong. It was still bad. But JP didn't have Valencia for like a month, I think. It was like a month or two weeks. Yeah, it was like Valencia came out on November 20th, right? Blue Demon Mali came out October 29th. It was almost a month with no counter. And he, he was legitimately broken. You couldn't win. Like, you, you, there was no team in the game that could win. So, it was insane. And then Red Monspeed, poor guy. He came out with the most broken release character in the game. I mean, at least people did something for, for um, Monspeed, wanting Blue Demon Mali, I suppose. Oh, but that, that period of time was insane in the game and he could do everything like he legitimately so Lilia Blue Demon Mali this was like I think the first time at least I looking at these banners right that they released one character that was meant to support a future character right oh one thing oh I think we're missing something did we I think either they skipped or I skipped. There is one banner that I'm pretty sure they skipped. Um, I don't want to go to your website. There is one banner I'm pretty sure they skipped. Because this is like way after they released already. So I'm pretty sure they skipped it. Um, go update new character because i remember listen i saw here right i went in jp this banner was um on the um in july on the 8th of july yeah blue bond and green king was the 8th of july this is um like i was like uh, th this is not showing up um blue king no, sorry. <laughs> green king and blue bond this was uh i'm pretty sure this is a sep this is like a different kind of banner was it not? Wasn't it um I think this was a double rates banner. I remember there was a double rates banner right in the beginning of the game. I don't remember if it was this banner or like one afterwards. But this was a banner strictly for the raids, right? Blue Bond and Green Skinny Kings respectively were good for the Red Demon and the, the Grey Demon. So this was a banner, of course, designed for uh, making the demons easier. I'm surprised the Korean form doesn't have it. That's weird. Um, but yeah, this is like, you know, I kind of, uh, this is unfortunate, I kind of skipped this banner in the actual, like, you know, in the actual uh, timeline. Because um, if I go here, past banners, right in the beginning, they should be right up here. It was, we have Liz, blah, blah, blah. Um, Where is it? Is it? I think it was this one. Seven Festival, no? Yeah, it must have been that one. Seven Festival, and it had the uh, the uh, the bond and 
50. And uh, they also skipped this one. What? The the red nunchuck bond. To be fair, that was, a, that was garbage. But like, <laughs> the red nunchuck bond was also skipped. Did they just not even bother putting it on their thing? Oh, and Gila was in the banner, so it wasn't talked about. But did they not even bother putting the nunchuck bond banner there? Damn. Okay, th that was definitely skipped. Oh, no, it's 4th of July. It was raid units raid up. Oh, it wasn't like a separate banner. Oh, I thought they had like every... Oh, this is new characters. I guess it makes sense. I guess it makes sense. King and Bond weren't new characters, but it was a banner. That's why I was very confused on why um, it was missing. It was a banner. King and Bond had raid ups. Um, for a banner. Okay, so it wasn't a new character. But... It was a banner. Okay. Well. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. I, I actually skipped a few because uh, I was looking back up. Okay. Let's go back in track. Get back in track. Um, Death Pierce and the... This was, at the time, garbage. Because crit was not meta. But again, a character that came out to set up future characters. Garbage. Death Pierce and the Guido was garbage. Uh, again, another SR character. I, I believe though Guido... No, he was... I was gonna say he was the last character. The last SR character should be put in a banner, but I believe that was... Um, I'm not talking Eren, because Eren a was, a, was a collab character. That was uh, that kid with the gray hair. Um, Death Pierce was not a good banner. For that time, right? After, you know, after crit became meta, Death Pierce became more relevant, but at the time that was uh, not very great. Oh, Melasculin Fat King was another horrible banner. I think this is the time where they went on a string of terrible banners, which was good because I think it was like multiple terrible banners in a row, and then we had like a huge banner. So. Fat King and Malaska, this is like the opposite of Global. Global tried their absolute best to milk every banner. But JP went a torrent of horrible banners. Fat King was kind of made for... Uh, uh, I think it was Fat... Uh, not, it was... Um, uh, it was... Uh, the, uh, the Merlin super boss, I believe. Uh, but he was still not the best. And the Malaska is just complete garbage. Um... But, oh, this is a terrible banner. And then right after that, it was Valenti, which, although, you know, I never liked her. I wouldn't say she was a horrible banner because she was important for the game. Like, without Valenti, the game would have gone so long with no blue DML counter. Like, no viable blue DML counter. Valenti was a necessary evil because I hate her, but she was a necessary evil for the time. She came out with Lilio with her. Valencia was uh, interesting. And also, like, that bring up, like, um, like uh, the stall meta. Oh! Oh! Her with Green Lilia, um, Green Merlin, and... Who was it that would be with her? Like, Blue Skinny King? I don't remember. Like, the fourth character, I don't, I don't remember exactly. Was, like... The worst. It was actually the worst thing someone has ever thought about in this game. Like, actually, actually, actually. So, I hate her so much. Worse than Goddess Liz. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to say that was worse than Goddess Liz. Um, after that, was another horrible banner. Green Glocks and Blue Merlin. Oh, ugh, disgusting. And the Green Glocks was, I, I think, they never really, they, they never really worked. But I think it was another attempt of countering Blue DML. Because not only he was green, but he, alongside Valenti, would make so you couldn't just double attack. Um, it, you'd be, like, super weak if you did. So I think it was another attempt to, like, shutting down Blue DML. This is a pattern that the devs actually started because of Blue DML. You will see from now on, a lot of times they release a broken character and try, they're so, they try to milk that broken character by releasing multiple attempts of countering that character. I don't know if it, the correct term would be milking, because I don't know if they're actually trying to milk it, but maybe they are. This was, you know, I, I think in my mind, an attempt to counter Blue DML. 
Um, Daldry came out right after, which again, horrible. And this was the last SR character. This is the last SR character, which would be on a banner that wasn't, you know, a collab. Like, you know, uh, like uh, Aaron. But Daldry, of course, horrible banner. <laughs> Daldry. I, I don't know if I would say she was also an attempt at counter Blue DM Mali because if her passive did go to Blue DM Mali, of course it would be a counter because he only had AoE attacks. Um, I'll count that, alright? I'll count it. But yeah, of course, not a good banner someone on. And then uh, also another horrible banner <laughs> right after was Green DN and Blue Nunchuk Bon. Although, actually, not here. Wasn't this like a 7% rate? I believe this is a 7% rate. I, I could be misremembering. I believe this was a 7% rate. I could be wrong. But this is like half anniversary festival draw. Back in the day, there were no festival characters. Like actual festival characters. This was the half anniversary banner. And it was terrible. I remember the celebration was really good. The celebration for half anniversary was one of the best they ever, ever released. But this banner was horrible. The only reason you'd summon for this banner is because Green Ascador and Blue Diamali were in it. And at the time, Green Ascador was still good. Because he was in the team with Meliodas. It was either you'd use um, Blue Diamali, Hauser, Lilia. Or you'd use Green Ascador, Mali, Lilia. Because then you'd, you'd have a better chance at winning against um, uh, Valencis. Right? After that, Elat and Balion. I think it was... I think Elet, yeah, Elet was a solo banner. A solo banner. Horrible. <laughs> horrible banner. Um, Elet, of course, horrible. Banner to summon on if you free the play. And then after that, it was... Oh, okay, okay. I thought right after it was already Balion. But before Balion came out, they actually released Red Ascanor. Big Daddy. This was one of the best banners ever released in the game in terms of value. Red Ascanor with three characters that were exclusive. And all three of those characters had costumes that would let you select what demon you wanted to play. Which at that time mattered much more than now. Um, and Green DML was actually pretty good when he came out. He never was like broken, but he was pretty good. And very, you know, hype, right? Because ever since the game came out, this asset of Green Demon Melee has always been in the game. Always. And it was actually different. I think I still have a picture of how he looked. It looked different than how he actually looks here. Let me actually see if I can find it. Okay, this is actually how he looked like. This He had the, like, a, like a purple outfit, right? So, uh... Probably that's how he was meant to release, like with this purple outfit. Uh, but then they were like, oh, okay, let's release the, the Meliodas' New Year's and let's give him like a New Year's outfit. I would have loved to have that purple outfit. Unfortunately, we never got that. Uh, but this was like an insane banner someone. Red Ascanor, right after he came out, people realized, oh, if you pair him up with Arthur, it's kind of nutty. Um, oh, and this was a funny thing because... As soon as we saw what Green DML did, we were like, this unit is garbage. Garbage, 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 garbage. And then they buffed him. It was it was gonna be 360% on a level 3 single target card with a mediocre effect. They buffed it, and then 180 on an AoE that was also kind of mediocre, and they buffed it. 180 is terrible for an AoE multiplier. Oh, this was a this was a great banner. Um, and then right after, they released another counter <laughs> for Meliodas, which shot them back in the face. Because this was supposed to be a counter for Meliodas. So Red, Red Skinny King was meant to be a Meliodas counter because he cut Pierce in half. And added Pierce in half. And then Balion also came out with him, which was garbage. But... It was meant to be a counter for Meliodas, but he ended up being a necessary asset for the Meliodas team. How did they manage to do that? I have no idea. 
But this was meant to be a counter for Meliodas, which ended up making the, the Blue Demon Meliodas team, I think, even more relevant than he was at the time. And maybe not. I think Valenti really cocked him. And then when Meli got the, um, the Pierce, he kind of like... The, uh, the ability to cock other melees himself, people kind of sh like shied away from using Valencia as much. So this was a funny, a funny thing to release. Oh man, we've only gone through two pages. I think I'm going to have to go faster on this. Um, both Asterosas came out at the same time. And this was, a, this was the first time they ever did this, as you can see. Releasing two of the same character together, because of course one's going to be Coin Shop. And we, we had no idea. We had no idea that one of these Esterosas was going to be a coin shop. We had no idea. And of course, Green Esterosa was... And honestly, to this day, one of my favorite characters that ever came out. So fun. The counters were so fun. I've been in love with him ever since he came out. I didn't Red Esterosa. It's, uh, we don't talk about Red Esterosa. <laughs> um, oh, the other... Like, this, this wasn't a bad band. I remember... This was again back in the day. I wasn't. I wasn't a whale. Uh, until this, I still wasn't a whale because this is before Global came out, and I had no money. So, <laughs> um, I remember I was so pissed because it took me like more than two hundred gems to pull one of them, and I was like, "Man, I'm going so deep on this pen." <laughs> if I told my past self, I would have to go five rotations of 900 gems to get one copy of a festival character. Ugh. But yeah, this was uh, a shaft for me because I had to go over 200 gems. Um, I mean, the, the units weren't very good, but like, of course, you know, they, they did the... This was the introduction of uh, the, the, the costume upgrade, which at the time was like very promising, but you know, these days it's kind of an annoyance. Uh, I mean, it was, it was an okay banner, I guess. Um, Oh, Red Derriere. Red Derriere was game-changing. She was actually game-changing. It, it was like, to the point where Red Derriere and Asterosa were such game-changing units that they had to revolve the game around them. They, they made so, the units were so good, right? That they could solo basically every activity in the game at the time. So they had to make so every new activity in the game wouldn't allow them to do that. So they made so every new activity would do extra damage against demons. This is like, this is before that. They made every activity in the game do extra damage against demons. That, that, that was like, they were so good that they had to completely cock them out of the game for the game to be in any way challenging whatsoever. That's how good they were. Especially Red Derriere, I feel like. Red Derriere was an insane unit. For PvE especially, of course. And Green Derriere wasn't very good as released, but I think over the over time she's become uh, more and more relevant, I think, Green Derriere. Uh, Red Melascula never was a banner, she was a coin shop unit. From from the gecko, she never got a banner, but she's still here on this... Uh, and also Red Gun. Red Gun also never got a, ba a banner. Um, they both went straight to the coin shop, but they had a bundle. You could buy them for a the hundred bucks. Or I think only Gallon had a bundle, I don't remember specifically, but I think both of them had a bundle for 100 bucks and you got one copy. Uh, mono, ooh. Red Mono, I remember. This was uh, my first Grand Cross chub. <laughs> the, my first Grand Cross love. Um, I mean, it was it was okay, Red Mono, but no, Blue Easton was a great unit, and to this day she's a good buffer. I, I'm very... Weirded out by the fact that we haven't really got many buffers ever since. Like, I guess Margaret, but like, buffers like this that like give attack related stats as a card, like a better one that give like 50% or something, kind of weird to me. Because Margaret, I feel like, is a much stronger one. I feel I see no reason for them to not, you know? What was this? Oh, Blue Arthur. This is a free banner. The first free banner pre festival. Did they call it a festival? In this? I don't think so. I think it was just it was, it was just like a free banner. And you're like, oh, cool, free banner. Oh, it was a 777 million download. Oh, this was so controversial because global players were so pissed. I remember 
Global players were so pissed that JP had free multis and Global didn't for this celebration. It was like, bro, you're gonna get it when, this, <laughs> when the banner comes out on your version as well, relax. <laughs> but yeah, I remember this is so funny. And then of course, oh man, we're finally, bro, this is taking too long, it's 35 minutes. We're finally getting to Lost Vein Meliodas. Literally broken. He was broken. He he was the best unit in the game, bar none. Actually. Like and then Green Frog. I mean Green Frog in every release was good, actually. It's just he really fell off. He fell off quick. Like if you invested in Green Frog, it was like as soon as as soon as um as soon as Goddess Liz came out, he became irrelevant instantly. Um, but um, Lost Vein was absolutely game changing. Crazy unit. And the banner was so good as well. It was uh, good. To, honestly, it was a fun time for the game. Fun time for the game. So these, I believe, also didn't get a banner, but it's here uh, Blue Fraudron and Green Monspeed. Um, now, Green Monspeed at release. Didn't seem too promising, but over time he has become much better, I feel like. Um, and also Blue Frogion, like these two units to this day are actually pretty relevant. Um, Blue Frogion, I think even more. Uh, but I mean, he did have like the sort of like the, the list passive, so it was more clear to people not to level him up, which I think was uh, was a, a good a good uh, head start for him over Liz as well, especially for those OG players. Red Roxy, I mean, she, she, you know, she's, you know, my, 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 uh, my Grand Cross love, but not very good unit. Ever, ever since Lodge, she was already bad. Uh, ooh, Zaldras, man, Zaldras was a good time for the game. I mean, it was a meme that he couldn't crit, but the game was so hype when Zaldras came out. It was, it was, like, Zaldras was a really hype banner, um, and he was really fun. I mean, he, he he never was mad at it. and again, couldn't crit, <laughs> but he was a fun time. And then Zaratrus, which is kind of garbage. I mean, now he's kind of decent for Belmoth, but that's about it. He was made for the, the DN final boss. Uh, I feel like a lot of characters that are made for final bosses end up garbage. It's kind of sad. Um, some, some are exceptions, of course. Like, Blue Lilia was made for the... Um, was it the Bond final boss? No, it was the, the Red Golfer final boss. Um, and she was good, but... Red Glocks also never got a banner. These are, these, are, these are including, of course, characters never end up actually getting a banner. Player God! Shin. Shin was such a, a cool banner for me. I mean, it wasn't very hype for a lot of people. Um, but I loved Shin from day one. I thought he looked so cool. I, I wanted to be him so bad. And he had double AoE, so it's like, oh, a farmer. Nice, because we haven't had... Like, you can see down the list, like, we haven't had a good farmer for a while. So, Green Shun was a great release, I feel like. He was a really good farmer. Oh, Blue Matrona. <laughs> Such a meme. She was so bad. <laughs> She's kind of decent now for, um, for Guild Boss, but she was so bad. Uh, and then, oh my god, do I dare click on this one? You you already see what it is. Do I dare click on this one? Oh my god. Uh, no no comment. <laughs> no comment. I need to talk about Hawk. Hate her. I hate her. I hate her. I hate her. Uh, don't don't show me don't show me her. I hate her so much. Hawk was fun. I think they should release more characters like Hawk. Hawk was just a free character. 6-6 six, six for free. Like, they haven't done a free 6-6 six, six SSR in so long. Free 6-6, six, six, right? And he was a special character where if it was a celebration, right, he would become super good on PvE. I don't see why they haven't released more characters like Hawk. Great addition to the game. And I think they should have released more like him. Red Zelders also wasn't the banner, but I guess worth including. Um... Dro in the end, I, bro, I remember, I was so against Dro. <laughs> I did not like Dro when he came out. Um, I mean, he wasn't very good when he came out because he got, like, heavily cocked by the, uh, the, the teams at the time, which were Blue Skinny King, Goddess Liz, and Lost Vein. That was the meta. 
So you could just cleanse Drill's passive super easily. But after Blue Skinny King got, got kind of faded away from the meta, he became kind of good ever since. After cleanse faded, uh, but ults were still meta, like people were still using... Like when Green Galfer came out, people started using Green Galfer, Goddess Liz, Meliodas. So Drill actually became more relevant because people weren't cleansing anymore. But when he came out, it was... It was... It was okay. It was still not bad, because if you use like Red Zelders, you can have like a really good anti-ult team, but it just it was kind of a stretch. The Attack on Titan collab. Ooh, we're here. I mean, man. These characters, this was hype. I think this was really hype. How many views did I get? 15k, okay. This was really hype. Um, and you know, Global was already around, so people were like, oh, when's it gonna come to Global? When's it going to Global? It was pretty soon. Um, to this day, I'm, I regret I did not 6-6 six, six Levi, but again, last SR character, Trevor come out in a banner. It's uh, sad, but he was so good. I unironically, <laughs> I think Re I think the SR Aaron was the best character to come out of the collab. All these characters were never actually good. Mikasa had like one good month on global where there was a rule that really helped her, but that was it. Um, these characters weren't very good, but it was really hype. And it was the introduction of transformation units, which never really came to fruition after Camilla, but, you know, it was pretty hype, I think. Valenti and Easton, such a forgettable banner. But, I mean, Red Easton, you know, sh oh no, it's Green Easton. Oh, never mind. Oh, I love Green Easton. I mean, Green Easton was a dream for me, because she was a counter to Goddess Liz uh, plus King, right? She was a counter to the uh, Las Vane Goddess Liz Blitzkini King team. Uh, so she was like, like a really good unit. And uh, I mean, until recently, I still really like using her. Um, but you know, Blue, <laughs> Blue Valenti was garbage. She was made for the Bond final boss. So again, another final boss character, which ended up being bad. Blue Drawer wasn't a banner, but good unit. Ludosia, oh man. I think this this was one of my worst shafts ever. I went 1600 gems to pull one copy, and he's a character that needs Stroud CC, so <laughs> I needed more copies. Oh, that was horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. I didn't like him when he came out, but I realized I was dumb, uh, and he was really good. Garheed was... Terrible at launch. Recently, she, you know, has picked up steam with a lot of activities being actually pretty good for her. But at launch, she was garbage. Um, Ludo, oh, man. Ludo was one of my favorite characters after I used him for a while. And, you know, I milked the ever-living shit out of Ludo Ciel. I made so many videos with him. So many. This man has paid my rent so many months. It's insane. But... Also, he made <laughs> he made a big stinker on my wallet with that shaft. Camilla never got a second character. How? We're talking Camilla released in August of 2020. Never got a second character. Um, last attempt at transformation. I mean, she was terrible at launch. Um, I mean, these days, you know, we can use her for final boss, not final boss, uh, guild boss, but terrible at launch. Uh, and then they never tried to make a transformation unit ever again. She was so bad that they gave up on transformation characters, which is a, is a shame because Camilla, listen, <laughs> she might be top three, top two best looking characters in the game. Like, we're, we're, we're talking, you know, up there. So, a shame. It's Blue Halbrum. It was the free banner for King. Oh, uh, Blue Halbrum. So bad. It was so bad. It's still bad, too. Like, a lot of these characters, I'm saying, like, oh, they were so bad at release. But, you know, eventually, there has been activities that they became good for. Blue Halbrum came out. He was bad. And he never became good. Maybe one day. But it still hasn't happened. And then final... Not final boss. Uh, Festival King. Oh, man. Festival King, listen, these days, you know, you can look at him like, oh, the, the worst festival ever. But listen, when he came out, <clears throat> that man was actually broken. Like, Festival King was actually so good that he single-handedly, like, killed 
the Lost Vein, Goddess Liz, and uh, Blue Skinny King meta. Like, Easton helped. She was a good counter, but King killed it. Like, it that was it for that meta. So, thank God. <laughs> yeah, Festival King did us a great service because that meta was trash. Uh, his, his meta wasn't great either, but it was at least better than that. So, these days, of course, who we regard him as the worst, but... This is the Evil Lilia. Oh, Evil Lilia was sort of like an attempt at um, being part of the King team, but I feel like she just wasn't strong enough. I feel like if she came out with the ability from her Holy Relic that she has now, it would have been GG. She would have been so good on that team, but Goddess Liz just brought more to the table, really. Like, that, that they came down to that. And then Blue Mono, kind of a missed opportunity, I feel like. Blue Mono is a, honestly a pretty good PvE character to this day, but that PvP restriction, like, I hate characters that have a such like a strict this like restriction right i think instead of saying oh the passive just doesn't work on pvp they should just make it so like only half the passive works in pvp because maybe all of it's broken like i, I don't know i feel like these sort of restrictions are incredibly annoying because it like like maybe she probably would still not be great on pvp but maybe but just give me the choice you know so but blue mono good oh the kof collab KOF Collab might have actually been my favorite collab ever. Like, KOF, I, I've never played a KOF game in my life. But the content and the banner... This was the first time collab characters were actually good. And Keo is still meta. Keo is still at the top of PvP. Mai was also really good. She wasn't insane, but she was really good. Athena has always been, like, low-key pretty good because of her passive. But never like meta, but like low key pretty good. And Rugal, he brought back Pierce. This man brought back Pierce, and he's still good. Like you, you don't see Rugals often, but bro, like you, I'm telling you, use Rugal with Festival King. It's so good. It's actually such a good team. So Rugal, such a good banner, and on global, they put they put Halloween Galfer on this banner to like the. The, the the banners was like a necessary pull. Like if you didn't summon for KOF when you were if you were playing the game and KOF came out and you didn't summon for KOF, you were playing the game wrong. I'm, like I'm telling you, you were playing the game incorrectly. Like it's more it's more than free will. It's like you are strictly playing the game in the wrong direction. So KOF was insane. Insane. And uh Roxy and Shin. Uh, Green Roxy was a really fun character. Honestly, I kind of want to give her the Holy Relic, but I'm um, probably not. Uh, Red Shin, I mean, he was good. Never really crazy, but good. Not as good as Green Shin. Uh, old book? Who's old book? Why? Is Galfer old book in Korean? Damn. Green Galfer, oh my god. I mean, bro. <laughs> Bro, Green Goffer. Uh, I, uh, do we have to talk about that? The Green Goffer is still best. Like, he's... I, I fluctuate in saying who's the best character in the game. Because there's obviously, like... I think, you know, if I have to say, like, who's the best character in the game, it's either Festival King or Green Goffer. And Green Goffer came out in October of 2020. Over a year ago. Um, but it's, in, it's between the two of them. Green Goffer... Listen, Green Offer came out, like, what, two banners after KOF? So if you got drained on KOF, oh, prayers. Um, oh, but, you know, Global had them at the same time. Then Sour... Bro, this was such a good string of banners. KOF? And then and then Green Offer? And then Sour and Tarmio. Oh, Sour and Tarmio. Both insanely good units. And listen, they're, beyond being good units, their grace was... Insane, like, like Ludo's Grace, I didn't even mention it, but when we're looking at Ludo, but Ludo's Grace was good, like, it was pretty good, but Saurio and Tarmio's Grace were so good, especially Tarmio, I think Tarmio's Grace is, like, the, by far the best Grace in the game. That passive healing is, like, insane, so. Uh, such a good string of banners, and then Red Jericho was a bit of a cooldown, you know, never, not anything too exciting, she's, honestly, 
for a long time she was pretty good with uh, Goddess Liz. It was a pretty toxic team, um, but you know, not very anything crazy. And then right after Red Jericho, the man, the big man, the one, possibly the most hype banner ever released in the game. That I've witnessed, you know, maybe maybe it was Green Liz when the game hit top grossing, right? But the one was insane. And the one maybe assault metal is happy, but the one was insane, of course. That the one. You know the one. The one, the one, the one. Green Arthur was also a really good inclusion um, to the banner. So like necessary banner to summon. It's such a good string of banners, man. It's crazy. Then right after Ask we had a cooldown, they released like this Elaine, which is garbage. Um oh, we're almost in the first page. And then right after Elaine, another garbage banner. Which listen, I I said this like at, when, when she when she came out, right? This red hair Liz was garbage at launch. She had no purpose, she was the worst design character in the game. Because even for the one activity that her passive worked, she was bad at it. She was really really bad right but <laughs> but eventually Belmoth came out and she's good now but man I hate when they do this man I hate when they do this it's so annoying um but after that of course we got Assault Mali which I, actually I think I think Assault Mali was the most hype because um I think top grossing is a good metric for that and Assault Mali was almost top grossing i recall it was like number two top grossing and we're talking end of the year end of the year so many gacha games are releasing hype stuff it was such high competition at the time and assault melee almost got top grossing competing with like dokkan and stuff like releasing like hype stuff as well so really hype 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 time for the game assault melee it never was you know <laughs> The number one bastion in the game, but listen, I've been getting really good views with this guy since he came out, so I can't complain. Of course, really hype stuff. Um, unknown, nice, great stuff. Um, <laughs> Nanashi, why is it just unknown? <laughs> Nanashi was a bit of a cooldown banner as well, although I think you know, no one talks about this guy, but he's like low key, de decent, you know. I think his low key is still decent. I just like I just like how he looks. Uh, not gonna lie, I've read the manga, right? Way before um, Global came out and stuff like that, I had no recollection of who Nanashi was. I had I had no recollection. I had to Google it. Mark Truvalenti is that? Yeah, Mark Truvalenti and Red Easton. Mark Truvalenti was one of my favorite characters in the game as well. She was basically Sariel, but she could disable Goddess Liz. Oh, and at the time. You could disable Goddess Liz's shield. Or, no, no, sorry. Of course, it's still her shield, but you could disable Goddess Liz's ultimate. They they changed that, so you can't anymore. But, man, that was... <laughs> that was a really good... That was a really interesting time. Um, then Red Easton, which, for a long time, she wasn't that crazy, but, you know, with Bon, she did become a pretty good um, asset for that team. Then uh, Blue Derriari, oh, we're getting into pretty recent stuff already. Blue Derriari, uh, pretty good, you know. She never became like, I want to say like top met, like she, she never lived up to Red Derriari standards, but pretty good, you know, you know pretty good. Uh, I, f I really relentlessly mocked her for having a worse taunt than the end, and she still has a worse taunt than the end, but that didn't matter because all that mattered was she was, she was a demon, right? And uh, her passive was pretty good, so. Denzel was, uh, was a really shitty way of making a free banner, but fun character. I mean, pretty useless, really, but fun character, yeah, I guess. Uh, Festival Merlin, oh man. The worst release of a character, I feel like, because she was really good. Like, Festival Merlin at launch was really good. But they had such a terrible demonstration of her on stream because they always stream the festivals, right? Like in action, beating the 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 meta, right? That's like their whole thing. Like they, whenever a new festival comes out, they make a stream 
and show the festival cucking the current meta so people get, you know, excited to summon for the festival. And they showed her getting destroyed by the one which was meta. It was so sad. But Merlin, fantastical character, actually. A really good unit. I'm, I'm beginning to lose my voice. It's it, I did not expect the video to go so long. Austin Hawk was uh, was cool. They were fun. They were not really much. Oh, ReZero. Another character. Listen. Another char set of characters, right? That I, and I think also Kabuki, and I don't remember if also Seaton, but I, f I don't remember if, had he already quit the game? I don't think so. But I'm, me, and especially Kabuki as well, we're like saying, if you don't summon for Emilia, you are dumb. <laughs> like, she was, like, from just looking at what she did, one of the most broken characters to come out. And she still is at the top of PvP. So, ReZero. Also, I think uh, ReZero was a decent collab. It wasn't as good as KOF, I feel like. KOF was, uh, had more stuff going on. But it was decent as well. Um, Beatrice was garbage, but... It was a good choice of a free character as well. Green Ram. Because if they gave for, for free this Beatrice, that would have been really sad. Um, that, was, that was actually pretty fun. I, I like collabs, man. It's been a while since we had one. Um, Festival Zaldris. Um Man, this was so weird because... How many visits get? 15k. This was so weird because... At the time, like, this was not hype. Like, Festival Zeldris was weirdly not hype. Blue Zeldris was hype. And freaking, even Red Zeldris was hype. Green Zeldris had no hype. Which I find very strange because Zeldris, he was one of the most hype characters in the anime. Um, but he wasn't very hype. And he was okay uh, at the time. He's much better now. Um, he is better now. But at the time, he was just okay. Uh, they didn't even make a stream for him. It was so weird. And then Chandler came with this bad boy. Chandler saved the banner. Legitimately, he saved the banner. He, Chandler was so impressive. Like, people were like, what? <laughs> Why is this guy not the festival? <laughs> like, he should have been the festival. Legitimately, I'm not even kidding. He should have been the, the Holy War Festival. This guy should have actually been the Holy War Festival. And this should have been a base green Zaldris. It would have made way more sense because, you know, a few months after that, they released Holy War Kusak. They might have as well have made Chandler a Holy War as well. But anyways, Chandler was so impressive. Uh, and then Zell just was... He was good. It was just like, his purpose was kind of being on the Assault Melee team, but he didn't really, like, make the Assault Melee team any better. Chandler did! Chandler did make this ultimately team better. But Zeldris was just kind of there. <laughs> um, now he is pretty good because of Kyo. Oh, the... See, I don't like this collab. <laughs> this was also pretty hyped because Global got it first. And Eleven was really good. Uh, and I also really liked Jim. But I feel like we didn't really get much content out of it. It was just like... they We, we had just had ReZero. Right? And they shoved another collab right after. It was so bad. Like, I think they, they should have waited a little bit more to release this collab. And I think people would have been more hyped for it. Um, and two of the characters were garbage. So that was not very nice. But uh, Eleven was pretty good. And Jim was pretty good. These days are not particularly great anymore. But they were pretty good when they came out. So that was that, that's something. Oh... Oh, we're <laughs> we're almost done. <laughs> we got to uh, Excalibur Arthur, another character that came out with no purpose. It's like, wh why wh why is this guy in the game? He looks like a character that should have come out two years ago. And then, pam pam pam, reason. <laughs> Festival Bond, the, his best friend, took over the matter by storm. It was a fun time. I got really good views on him. <laughs> uh, Festival Bond was fun. Uh, I mean, he became annoying, but it was fun. Blue Ocelot and Hawk was just garbage. They were just garbage. 
Oh, we're almost done. We're in page one already, basically. Then we got Tonar and Sigurd. I mean, Sigurd was, you know, and still is really good. I really like him. Um, but I think that at the time, like, you like you shouldn't really have someone in this banner. Only because, you know, Bon had just released. And it was like, man, you, you should have gone all in on Bon, right? All in on Bon. Um, and if you didn't, you would be kind of dumb. Oh, and <laughs> I almost forgot he existed. <laughs> Blue Lost Vein. I do like him, but I was wondering if he existed. Blue Lost Vein as well. Um, which all, 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 I like as a release because he really said that, like, these festival characters, which all, were all, like, new named, can be characters that aren't festival. So that was a nice release, I feel like. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, Sigurd was good, but bon, bon had just come out, right? So... It was uh, probably not a good idea to summon for them. Oh, I need to do this because uh, it's kind of bugged. Okay. Um, oh, we're almost present day. And then we got Blue Roxy. What a garbage banner. <laughs> Blue Roxy. And then we got Ellie Hawk and Summer Merlin. I love Summer Merlin. I think to this day she's a really good unit. I mean, I'm saying like it was a long time ago, but... I think she's a really good unit. Terrible banner, though. Like, especially, again, Bun had just come out. And, I mean, we didn't know at the time, but <laughs> Margaret was about to come out. was, like, the best unit in the game. Um, I never really liked Liz Hawk. A lot of people really liked her. I just never really liked her passive. She's good. Um, you know, if you have, like, a... F at the time. Not anymore, but... If you had, like, a full goddess team, it could be, like, really toxic. So it's pretty good. But I never really liked her. Just because her passive was so weird. Then right after that, boy oh boy, Margaret. Margaret was not that great. Margaret was pretty mediocre actually. And I, this time, at this time was um, at the time I got really sick. I remember I had just moved back from Germany to Portugal, and I got really sick, really really sick. I had constant pains in my body. We thought maybe I even had COVID. I ended up not being COVID. Thankfully, um, and I remember like this, you know, I was kind of happy that the festival wasn't that good because I was missing out on making so many videos, but then they buffed her and she became like the best of the best, best in the game. Like they, they buffed her so much. It was too much. Um, and she became like stupid good, of course. This is so recent. It should be <laughs> in your, your guys' memory as well as it's in mine. Kusak was terrible at launch. Absolutely horrible. He was a... Like, they had never done this before, where they released a festival character, right? Ludo Seal, and released another festival two weeks later. It was... Oh, one of the worst releases ever. And he was bad. Like, he was just bad, because no one was using Bon anymore. Bon was overthrown really fast. Like... Because Bon has been in meta in recent memory, you might not, like, recall that Bon was only meta for a little while. He was meta for a little bit, and then Margaret came out, and she absolutely devastated. There was no reason, if you used Bon, you would lose to Margaret. She was so good. Like, she completely overthrew Bon. And then they released Kusok, preemptively to Holy Relics, right? But they released Kusok which countered Bon, which already wasn't meta. So it was a terrible release. But then they released Holy Relics. <laughs> I remember it was this patch, actually, with Brynhildr and the end. They released Holy Relics. Bon became the number one guy again. And look at that, Kuzak became relevant. <laughs> I, I don't know if it was on purpose. I think it was on purpose. I think that they knew that they were going to make Bon like, meta again. And they were gonna re they release his character, and they were they were gonna be like, okay, if you don't summon for him, you're gonna you're gonna miss out on a good counter. So, um, well, you you suit yourself, but so annoying. Bird Hilder, of course, this is when the, the bird came out. Uh, at the time, because the bird was red and it was all in Japanese, I thought she was gonna be bad because she's green. But of course, now you know we know the bird doesn't it doesn't matter what element you're using, right? 
But yeah, sort of a necessary character, honestly. At a time when you barely could beat the bird stage one, you know, consistently. Um, and the end, the end was an interesting, you know, character because she was really good at countering Margaret, but no one used her. Like, no one used her. Um, I'm assuming because a lot of people skipped this banner, but no, because a lot of people must have summoned for this banner for Brynhilde, right? So they must have pulled the end. Maybe they didn't. Um, but the end is interesting. I, f I think um, I recently made a video on the end. People were so pissed that I didn't use her with Keo. But it's just like, oh man, you, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, if you go against the king, you're still not going to kill them. Um, but she was very short lived because, you know, she was made to counter Margaret, obviously. Right? And Margaret became not as meta when the holy because of the holy relic, right? For Ban. So they, they released the end, which was a counter for Margaret, while releasing the Holy Relic for Ban, which would make him overthrow Margaret at the same time. So, interesting timing, I suppose. Uh, Red Easton, one of my least released characters, one of my least favorite released characters ever. Uh, and Green Mono, which I kind of like still, sort of. She was good. This was a really bad banner. Um... And then Festival Galfer, which was so controversial. Festival Galfer almost made me quit the game. Like, not because of him specifically, right? Festival Galfer is actually a pretty fun character. Um, but this is when they removed festivals from the festival banners. And I, um, at this point in time, I was so fed up with the game. Like, they were releasing such bad patches back to back to back to back to back and everyone was so pissed at them like uh everyone was so 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 done with the game because of this this was on kusak people were so pissed then they released a bird and there was a character that was basically the only one beating the bird people were so pissed and then they released this character which no one cared <laughs> so not really worth mentioning and then they took off festivals from the banners, it, from the festival banners, it was not a good time, not a good time, um, but Gopher was, Gopher's good, I, but he's still good, he's still, like, he's mad at now, but at the time he wasn't insane, only because uh, Bon was still way better, right, Gil wasn't a banner, uh, Matrona, listen, Matrona is like the one odd character that I told everyone to summon on. Because she's just so good for the bird. She, she is like, she makes the bird so much easier. If this character had never come out, I don't think I would beat stage 3 every week without like beating myself, actually. She makes it so much easier. Then, uh, oh, I hate this DN. Then they re they re why did they release this DN, man? This DN came out right after another new name DN. That was so odd. I do still like Slater, though. So Slater was a fun character. And the return of the KOF collab. I mean, I said we haven't had co a collab soon. I mean, like, new collabs, right? Of course, we had the, the return of the KOF collab with Terry and... Um, what's his name again? <laughs> Yuri. <laughs> uh, which were, like, both really good. Terry especially. Terry... Terry basically solidified Bond as the team. Like, Bond was already the best team. When Terry came out, it was like game over, right? Um, but, like, new collabs, we hadn't had a new one in a while. Miguel, the still waiting for her to become actually good. Some people are so upset that I, I, I said that she isn't optimal for the bird. She isn't, come on. If you're, if you're saying that Miguel is optimal for the bird, you're, you just haven't used the king. Like, um, I mean, she, 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 she's good for the bird, but not optimal. Still waiting for uh, more characters to come off for her. I, I was gonna say, like, <laughs> I skipped this man! Festival King! The best dude in the game. In such recent memory, I don't have to give too much commentary over. Lilia, you know, it, it, it just came out. Like, we have we have had the, the, the recollections of them of recent times. But, you know, of course, if you're watching this in the future, Festival King is the best dude in the game, currently. And Lilia is a really good unit. 
Um, and then Liz, which it's okay. One day we'll have good use for her. Um, one thing though, so we're done. One hour and 10 minutes, man, my throat hurts. Um, that you might actually notice is we have been losing a lot of views on a page. The Korean version of the game, and I mean all versions, but especially the Korean version of the game, has been on a, such a down. Like you can see, the first banner we ever had had 100k views on a page, then 80k, 60k, 60k, and you know, 39k right there, 20 k like good numbers, man. And then now, we got like festival units, whereas, whereas, um, it was on page one. Whereas, um, uh, getting 8k views, like, it, it's sad, but it is what it is, you know? It is what it is. Um, I mean, I think it speaks a lot to, like, um, the Korean version has been dying. The Korean, the Korean version has really been dying. Global version is not as bad as the Korean version is, or the Japanese version, but... The Korean version of the game has really, like, lost the appeal for Grand Cross ever since the, uh, I think ever since the first anniversary, but... Lots of nostalgia of the old banners. Spa Man, I think that the old banner that I was more, the most hyped to see had to have been either Blue Demon Melly or, of course, Green Ascanor, but... How would you think? What was the, what was the banner you started playing on? What was what was your first banner? Was it a day one banner? Was it was it like Zeldris? I'm gonna I'm gonna drink water. That's what I'm gonna do right now. That's a long video. <laughs> 